Hey, what's going on? It's Dr. Kai Dupre, episode 73, Coding While Black. Today is February 19th, and I'm in Portland, Oregon. Had to bring my son here for a volleyball tournament. So the family went out shopping before we go out to dinner a little bit later. So I decided to take a few minutes and while I was in my hotel room, share a few thoughts since I haven't posted in a couple of weeks. And the topic that came to mind today is <clears throat> people ask me all the time what I think is the most important skill to be a software developer. And I'll tell you, when I started my career, and I thought about this, I was watching the Colin Kaepernick documentary on Netflix a couple of weeks ago. And there was a moment in the documentary where he was, where the actor was playing or portraying the young Colin uh, as he was running into obstacles, a lot of them racial. Some of them were just, you know, he was being discriminated against because he wanted to play quarterback. And at one point, I think it was his father or someone told him, prove them wrong. You got to prove them wrong. And Kaepernick said, why am I always the one that has to prove somebody wrong? Why is, it all, why is the burden of that always on me? And I can tell you from the very beginning of my career as a software developer, that was the case, right? I was always being put in a position to prove people wrong who had a certain perception about me, um, whether or not I could do the job, whether or not I was smart enough, whether or not I was intelligent enough, whether or not I was hardworking. And they will lay all kinds of pitfalls and traps uh, to prove that what they thought about you was correct. I'll never forget on one job I had, it was later in my career, and at this time I, I was a consultant for a lot of the, my latter work. And I would always show up to work in a suit, you know, well-dressed. Uh, and, and, and it was very different from people nowadays walking into to, to code in hoodies and that kind of thing. And people started copying the whole hoodie look, which is, that was never my vibe, especially not for, from a work perspective. I, I walk around in a hoodie. I'm not walking to no office with no hoodie on, even to this day. And uh, I remember one day, I was on my first, first day of my job, at a job I had. I walked in, I had on the double breasted suit. I think it was a FUBU suit. And it was the first day this woman was walking me around, showing me around. And I met this woman while I was walking around, you know, we were exchanging pleasantries in the office. And she said, oh, you dress really nice, but, you know, you don't have to dress that way. We're, we're really relaxed here. And I said, oh, okay. So the next day, I came in the office. I didn't have on a suit. I had on some slacks. had on a dress shirt with some cufflinks, no tie, no jacket. Same, I walked past this same woman, and she says to me, oh, you better not let... Uh, Leslie or Lou, I forget the woman's name. She's the fashion police from around here. She better not see you walking around dressed like this with your shirt untucked and this kind of thing. I'm thinking to myself, I was just in here yesterday in a three-piece suit, and your comment was I was overdressed. Now that I come in here dressed a little down, you're threatening me with HR, and don't let the HR person see you dressed that way. And so, you know, she's not commenting on anybody else's dress in the office. And I worked there for like four years after that as a consultant. And of course, every time she saw me, I hit her with a new suit. But, uh, and new shoes too, by the way. But uh, who are you, right? Who, who do you think you are to dress this way? Uh, why are you dressing better than we're dressing, right? My perception of you and what I think of you and what you're presenting to me is different than what I thought. And I'm uncomfortable with that. That was all day, every day. I can tell you 25, 30 stories about that throughout my career, although they're gonna be in my new, my, my new forthcoming book that I'm, that I'm working on. But back to the, the idea of the skill, right? There's a lot of skills I could name um, about being successful as a software developer. And I do consider myself to have been a very successful software developer. Not the greatest of all time, not, not you know a fellow or all these names they give folks who work at companies for 30 or 40 years, but I was very successful because I was able to take care of myself. I bought homes, cars, took, tri took trips, and everything that I did was because of my prowess as a, as a software developer. So I consider that successful. But the number one skill that I wanna mention is reading, right? Because in this job, it's about what you know. It's about what you can do and get done and create and problem solve, but that's based on what you know. And what you know comes down to what you read and retain. 
So I, and back in my day, I was constantly reading. And I prided myself on whatever it is I was working on, whatever the programming language was or the technology, I was going to know it better than anyone else. I was going to know it cold and I was going to know every detail about it. And I spent a good 10 to 15 years in that mode where anytime a new book came out on the subject, blog post, magazine article, wherever I could consume it and read it and take notes, that's what I did. And so if you're not somebody that enjoys reading, you better make that a, a habit because it is constant because you have to keep up. Even right now, I don't code anymore uh, professionally. I'm a trainer. I'm constantly reading. I just finished going through a, a tutorial, right, for some work I'm doing next week. Constantly, constantly reading. And I think anybody who's been a developer will tell you that, you know, this, this challenge of keeping up. I'm constantly reading, whether I'm reading something technical or I'm reading something about the career. I'm always wanting to know as much as I possibly can, because believe you me, folks are looking to trip you up. And I'll close with this. I may have shared this story before. I remember I was, I was applying for a job one time in California, Huntington Beach, I believe it was. And I was in one of these ridiculous interviews, and this is back before they started all this nonsense about whiteboarding and solving a problem on the fly to judge you about uh, your your ability, which is ridiculous and it's nonsense. And there's no 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 proof or any research that shows that that has any bearing on you as an employee or uh, how you get the job done. Not that I know of. Anyway, I went to this interview, and I remember I sat across the desk from the guy who was the, I don't know if he was a hiring manager. He was, he was definitely the, the person doing the technical interview. So he asked me, it was about C. He asked me a question about C, I answered the question. He asked me a second question about C, I answered the question. He asked me a third question about C, I answered the question. He asked me a fourth question, I said, hmm, I'm not sure. He went, ah, gotcha. I said, what do you mean gotcha? Well, uh, Mr. Kai, we're not going to be able to extend you an offer for this position. I said, why not? Well, we wanted somebody to you know, answer all these questions. I mean, he didn't say that verbatim, but the, the gist of it was I couldn't answer the fourth or fifth question, so I'm not qualified or I'm not the person they're looking for. And I said, oh, so you're saying that I can't do the work, you're not going to hire me based on the fact that I couldn't answer that question? He was like, yeah. I said, you think that proves something? And at this time, I had been, you know, I was a veteran in the game. I, I've been in the, my career about 10, 12 years. I said, so you think I can't ask you a question? that you can't answer. I had been interviewing people in other jobs. People, I was the interviewer. So I had those kind of questions in my back pocket. And he said, no, I don't believe you could. I said, you're, I said, you're ready? And so I asked him the question. He answers incorrectly. And I said, well, that's not the right answer. He starts hemming and hawing. No, what I meant was, I said, I, I don't really care what you meant. And of course, at this point, I know I'm not getting the job. So all the gloves are off. I said, I'm just proving the point. I, I don't care to work here. I don't want to work here now that I understand how things work around here. I said, but just take this with you going forward. I just asked you a question, just like you asked me a question, and you couldn't answer it. Does that mean you're not qualified? And these are the kind of games, games that they play. And they are playing the games, believe you me. Rest, rest assured. So the better off, you, the, the, the better you can answer these questions, even though some may say I'm not even going to put myself through that, and many have, which is why we don't see a lot of brothers in this field. But if you can go in there and answer question after question after question and prove that you know what you're talking about. I used to have fun with it, right? It got old after a while. I'm not going to lie about that. But again, the opportunities out here now not, are varied. You don't have to go and work at a company. You don't have to go and work somewhere where you're constantly having to be dr drilled like that. But it opens up your opportunities. It, it broadens your, your options. OK, even if you're working for yourself, even if you're starting your own company, your own business, even if you're consulting or contracting, the more you know, the better. OK, I spent lots of money on books, lots of money. All right. And I still do. So that's it for today. Episode 73, Dr. Kyle Dupuy. If you liked it, hit that like button, subscribe, tell someone else. February 19th, Saturday, I'm out.